Hey everybody, it's finally Friday. And I'm so excited because, oh my God, this week has been really long for me. Sweet mother of God, has it been long. Do you ever just have those weeks where you're like, oh my God, it's only Tuesday? I thought it was Friday. Holy shit. And that's how this week felt to me. I was like, oh my God, so long. I had a lot of extra sh stuff going on, a lot of stuff I had to do. I'm still trying to change my name and that's just stressful. But anyway, enough about me. Since it's Friday, that means I'm on Facebook. And if you asked your questions using the hashtag KDFAQ, I've answered them. And I have three today and I have a journal topic. Sorry, I'm getting comfortable here. And I have a journal topic at the end, so stay tuned for that. Okay, first question. Could you talk about healthy internet use? The more depressed I am, the more I withdraw into the online world. I think it's something many of us here have experienced. I think so. Tumblr, YouTube, Facebook. I'm online 12 plus hours a day trying to fill this part of me that I can't really describe. When I'm overwhelmed or anxious or sad or irritated, I find it an easy way to push the feelings down. Same goes for Netflix. I often watch my go-to show on TV while I'm sitting on the couch with my laptop. I think a lot of us are guilty of this, especially because we have so many, so many, so many ways to interact and it's all online. I, there are a couple things I wanna discuss here. Number one, healthy internet use is having it be a nice addition to your life. Like you have real friends in real life that you see and you contact and family you keep in touch with. And then you have your online world where you chat with people that you may also see in real life or it's an easy way to keep in touch with people long distance or it's a nice way to get support when you're struggling. And we have it as like a tool in our coping toolbox. We're like, I'm having a shitty day. I'm gonna check out online and get a little booster, you know, bit of inspiration or motivation or whatever. And that's what I think healthy internet use is. Because the, the second thing I wanna talk about is we don't wanna use the internet as our only coping skill so that we're on 12 plus hours a day because that's our entire day we're online. And I think what happens, and I've had this happen with a lot of my clients where I feel like they're not interacting face to face, person to person with anybody anymore. They're just interacting um, with people online. And it can be so helpful. Why did I create this community? You're probably asking yourself. And it's because it can be such an amazing coping skill and tool. It's a tool in our toolbox. It's not our whole toolbox, but it has many of the tools that we need, but we still need person to person interaction. And I know it's hard when we're sad and we're depressed and we're irritated, but those are the times when we need to call upon our sturdy support group, like those friends that love you no matter what, or that family member that will listen to you, bitch, while you're like, oh, it's so bad, everything's terrible today. Because we all have those days, and I understand it's hard, but I would try to limit your usage. For those of you who aren't doing the 12 plus hours, I would try to limit your usage to maybe three hours a day. I think that that's fair. I think you can get almost everything done that you needed to get done online. Unless you're like in school and you're researching, I totally get that that's separate. This is just social media, uh, interaction, follow, looking on Tumblr and scrolling and scrolling, Instagram, scrolling, scrolling. I mean, we all do that. I call it falling down the rabbit hole. I'm like, oh my God, I've been doing this for like 20 minutes. I just totally lost 20 minutes of my life. So just be aware, be cognizant if you're using it as a coping skill. And then what do we do? We just try to cut back. Obviously don't black and white it. Don't all or nothing. It's not no time to from 12 hours. It's maybe instead of 12 hours, I only do 11 and a half. And then next week I work towards 11 and then we just start cutting it back. And then every time you recognize, maybe I, you know, you think to yourself, wow, I've been on here a long time. This computer's really hot on my lap or whatever. Think maybe I'll get off right now. I'm just going to shut it for 20 minutes. I'm going to take a little break. I think that that would kind of help. And it's, it's good for us to interact with people in real life. It's really important. So get out there and get back in touch with people. And yeah, I think you'll find it to really help you feel better. Okay. And let me know what your thoughts are on this because it's something that I've been thinking a lot about lately in general because of what I do. And it's something that we need to be cognizant of, right? We need to start the conversation. We need to be aware of it and notice when we're using it too much. Okay, question number two. Hi, Katie, I'm stepping down from PHP today. Hooray, congratulations. So I want to move out of my parents' house like I was planning, but my treatment team says it's not a good idea because it could cause me to relapse. I feel stupid being 22 and living with my parents. What's your view? Um, like many things. I have, I see both sides and that's what I usually talk about in videos, which sometimes makes people frustrated because I can see both sides. Now for this particular person, I know her story. She's been following me for a long time. We've been communicating. So I know that your parents are really triggering and it's bad for you to live there. So I understand. So a part of me says, move, do it, go for it. Your treatment team is telling you that it will cause you to relapse because there are like 10 major stressors that we talk about in therapy that we know are potential triggers to relapse or to, um, 
maybe first manic episodes or first a depressive episode, and we know that they're really, really stressful in their heart, and one of those is moving. And so what they're thinking is, whoa, 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 you just got out, don't rock the boat, let's not get you so stressed that you relapse. But I think we can kind of meet in the middle, right? We can see both sides. So I think we can meet in the middle where maybe you plan the move as best you can. Moving's gonna be stressful anyway, but the more planning we do, the better we'll feel about it. Um, maybe you get movers, maybe you have friends come over and help you move and work through the transition. Maybe you tell your therapist and have extra sessions during that time. But either way, recognize that the urges may get worse because you're stressed out and you may slip up, but it's just a slip up and we get back up, we pick ourselves back up and we keep fighting because I think you can get through this. And at the end of the day, I think that it's important for you to move rather than stay with your family because I know that it's really difficult for you. So I would say prepare for the move and do it. Okay. Question number three, why do we lie when we feel self-conscious? I thought this was a really good question because we all do it. We're all guilty. We lie sometimes when we feel really self-conscious about ourselves and we're unsure. And I think the main reason that we do it is because of the self-consciousness. I often find myself, like, if I really, really want to fit in in this group or I'm new to a group, like, I go to different meetings all the time to meet other YouTubers and to get to know people. And I've done meetups and stuff. And you want people to like you and you want to fit in and you want to get to know people. And sometimes if you feel like you don't fit in and you're like, wow, I have nothing in common with these people. What am I supposed to do? Oftentimes we, we lie, we fudge some things just so we can feel like we fit in. And I think that that is completely normal. Now, is it healthy if we're doing it all the time? No, but I think that's why we do it. It's part of our kind of protective mechanism to help us feel like we fit in because as human beings, all we want is to fit in somewhere, to have some friends or a group of support or something where we feel like we belong. We're always searching for that. And so when, oftentimes if we don't and we start to feel self-conscious, then sometimes we lie to compensate so that we do you know, fit in. Those are just my thoughts on it. And you can let me know what you think below. You might not agree at all and that's fine, but that, that's just my, my take on it, okay? Now the journal topic for today is something very simple, but it's something that I think we need to do periodically because if you're like me, you had a bad week. I had a bad week. I was tired, it was long, nothing was going my way, everything seemed to like bombard me at once. And so it's just stressful, right? And so what do we do? So this weekend, I want you to write down 25 things. I know, it's a lot, 25, but I think you can get this done that make you feel good. For me, I'll just start this off to get your brain, your juices flowing on this. So I love, feet in cool grass, like soft grass. You know, when you walk outside barefoot in the grass, I love that feeling. So that's one thing that makes me happy. I also love when people scratch my back. That's another thing. So you can see, it could be really simple. Those are things that make me feel good. I also like laying out in the sun. I, I was raised in the Seattle area and it's really dreary and cold there and I really like the sun. So think of 25 things that make you feel good and let's try to do a couple of those this weekend and let me know what you did, okay? I will see you all on Monday and on Tuesday I'll be on Tumblr, so ask your questions there. Okay, bye.